Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Well, today is the 1st of January 2024 and it's a perfect time to reset your English and to make some New Year resolutions. Last night I went to bed very early so I missed all of the New Year's celebrations and I woke up this morning in 2024. I was, however, invited to a Zoom party last night and I popped in for a little while at around 8 p.m. I have a friend here in the UK who's a funeral director Those are the people who look after your body and arrange your farewell once you die. Even though he has a very depressing job, he is actually quite fun. So I thought I would go to his Zoom party with his colleagues for an hour. And I did. Now, those people in the UK who look after you once you die... They're called undertakers because they undertake all of the business that needs to be done after your passing. And uh, they're advertised as undertakers or funeral directors. Now, in America, they're simply known as running funeral homes. Now, that's not a phrase that we use in the UK, We don't say funeral homes, we say funeral directors. But my friend, he works for an American chain. So in this Zoom meeting, there were loads of American funeral directors who operate funeral homes. Now, this was interesting because I wasn't expecting many Americans to be there bearing in mind the time difference. And you know, Americans are very different from British people because they take great pride in their appearance. Another thing I was surprised about in this New Year's Eve party was the number of female funeral directors. Now, I know that during the war in the UK, it was quite common for women to be working as undertakers, but uh, I didn't think it was so common today. But anyway, I found myself in this Zoom room full of funeral directors. It was very funny. I mean, they seem to have a very nice uh, life (laughs) despite their job, and they were quite fun to be around. So that's how I spent my New Year's Eve shortly before going to bed at half past ten. One of the weirdest things that happened in this meeting was that, like most Americans, the women there were always very complimentary about British men. You know, Americans, they love British people. And I was asked some strange questions. Somebody asked me if I knew Princess Diana. And I responded, no, of course. It was a little bit racist, assuming that all British people know each other. Another one asked me if I knew uh, Elton John. And I said, no, you do realize Britain is a big place? And they said, no, it's a tiny island compared to America. And I suppose that's true. Probably the weirdest thing that happened during my meeting with these American funeral directors to celebrate New Year on Zoom was when one of them said to me, oh, um... You know, British men are very attractive. And she said, you're very attractive for being a British man. 
I always find British men attractive. You look very handsome. And I said, well, thank you very much, but most of the men you meet are dead, aren't they? So <laughs> that's not a compliment. Because she actually said, oh, compared to other men that I've seen, you're very handsome. And I'm thinking, yeah, but the other men you've seen are all dead, aren't they? So <laughs> it wasn't really a compliment. Anyway, I stayed for an hour. They were all getting very drunk on Zoom drinking champagne. And uh, I decided it was best to leave early. So now we're into 2024, a new year with new beginnings. And I asked these American funeral directors if they had any New Year resolutions. And of course, because they're American, they had positive resolutions, things that actually work, whereas British people tend to be very cynical about this kind of thing. They told me that, uh, well, among other things, one of them told me that they want to learn a new word each day in a rare language. I'm not sure if she came up with that just to impress me because she knows that I teach English online. But I thought that was a bit of a strange resolution, that, to learn a new word in a rare language. I'm not sure why she didn't just agreed to learn the language. Um, another American told me that they want to write a letter to their future self every month. Well, that's very American, isn't it? If you can imagine an American doing that, but I can't imagine a British man doing that. Um, another one told me that she wants to try a new food every week. Well, yeah, that, that would work. Um, one of the men in that group said that he wants to start a collection of something unusual. And I'm thinking, well, you already, you know, collect people to bury. <laughs> so isn't that enough? Um, of course, another American woman told me that she wants to take a photo in a different hat every day. And I'm thinking, really, am I missing out here on wonderful resolutions because my resolutions tend to be about giving up things or stopping bad habits. My resolutions always don't work because they're never really ones which are doable. Um, yeah, and the others, one told me that they want to do more random acts of kindness. And I'm thinking, random acts of kindness? Huh? Well, I suppose I am kind to people, but I wouldn't call them random acts of kindness. There was that moment last year when I picked up a woman's gloves that she dropped, I guess. But they're, they're talking about going to the coffee shop and paying for the coffee. Um for the past and behind them in the queue and these kind of things. Um, another one of these funeral directors told me that they're going to learn to juggle. You know, that's when you throw things in the air and drop them. Um, they want to learn to juggle with unusual objects like pillows, cushions or socks. I thought that was a bit strange. Um, and finally... Another American told me that she wants to read a book from every continent. And in my mind, I was thinking, I wonder if she knows what a continent is, because, you know, Americans are quite bad with geography, aren't they? Uh, so that was a little bit strange. <laughs> but um, anyway, my New Year resolutions are all about stopping bad habits, losing weight, um forcing myself to learn more languages, even though I might not actually want to do that, look at ways of how to make more money. Um, so it seems that uh, Americans have a very positive view in terms of what they want to do. Anyway, 
Um, I wonder if you're making some uh, resolutions about your English. What I found is that some of you make resolutions which are completely unworkable. You say things like learning 60 words a day, forcing myself to read a page of English every day. You know, if you really aren't doing that now, why stress yourself trying to do it every day from today? It'll only make you very unhappy, especially if you really don't want to do it. I think maybe something more positive would be to examine what tools you're using and why you aren't reading that page every day. It's probably because you've got the wrong level of book or you've got the wrong material and 60 words a day is highly unworkable anyway. As I often say, creativity plus passion gives you English. So choose something that you like. I mean, I love radio. So if I could possibly find a radio magazine in the language I'm learning, I'd be more, more enthusiastic about learning. So that's the kind of thing that you're aiming for. But I do understand that that's not always possible. Although on Facebook, everything is possible. You can even ask it to translate uh, posts into other languages for you. <clears throat> anyway, let's look at some words to uh, talk about New Year celebrations. <clears throat> well, it's a great time of renewal. Uh, it's a great time to renew your mind, uh, to make new promises, to dust off the old and start with the new. Um, many women yesterday would be cleaning. In fact, my neighbor started to vacuum at 10.30 last night, although I, I still think she has some mental health problems, so I, I wasn't so angry at her, but it did annoy me on the Zoom call. Um, celebration is another one. Uh, this is a time of great celebration. Today is a day to reflect on the future goals, but not too much. I mean, if you start thinking about next year's course, if you're a student, it's, it's very overwhelming because you don't know if you'll be accepted. You don't know what the future is going to bring. You don't know um, if you'll have the money to do it. So it's not a time to be thinking about insecurity. It is a time to reflect, however. So reflection is a good word to use. Hope, of course, we all have hope at the start of the year. And that hope is brought to us just by the year itself, not necessarily because we need to have a belief in something. Fresh starts, yeah, this is a great time to have a fresh start. So if you're ready for a new English course, come and talk to me and we can look at some accent introduction techniques. Um, resolution, this is a great time to um, resolve and promise yourself that you're going to do some things. But please, please do it with kindness. New Year resolutions are promises we make, but you have to keep them into perspective, especially as we get older. We must realize we're not kids anymore. We should be slowing down and taking it easy. The anticipation of beginning these new things often fills us with enthusiasm and gets us going. For me, I want to really focus more on motivation and helping you to get where you want to be and helping to get myself going to where I want to be. And I, I do understand that that's really hard sometimes to get ourselves moving, especially mentally in the middle of the dark winter. Change, that's a great word for the start of the new year. Um, after a lovely dinner today, it's, it's nice to make some promises about how we're going to change, but do it the American way. Choose things that bring you joy rather than things that make you miserable. Growth, well, we'll be growing from change. 
and of course to try to stay optimistic. Thank you, by the way, to all of you who've taken the time to send me messages to wish me a happy new year. Uh, I really appreciate uh, all of those. Thank you. Um, there's one here that arrived this morning. Greetings from Paraguay. Um, thank you for your energy. Oh, that was nice. Uh, another one here from Germany. Um, Teacher Joseph, all the best for the new year. Thank you for that. Uh, one here from... Oh, now, I don't know where that's from. It's Asia, somewhere. Uh, I don't recognize the name. It's a student I've had in the past. Anyway, she's saying, uh, Dear Teacher Joseph, thank you very much for your wonderful podcasts and lessons. Uh, please be as cynical and bitter as always. Ha, ha, ha. Well, that's nice, isn't it? Well, thank you for that. Uh, and one final one from Norway. Dear Teacher Joseph, we love your podcasts. Um, many people here are listening to you. You're very funny. Oh, well, thank you very much. Norway. Oh, did I hear that your queen resigned yesterday? Oh, no, that was Denmark, wasn't it? The queen of Denmark. She quit and she's passing the the what, what would you call it the throne yes the seats she's passing the throne or you could say passing the crown to her son uh, that was a very interesting story wasn't it um isn't she the one that's always on tv smoking with the dogs that's what i seem to remember about her um although i always loved the swedish royals queen sylvie uh, she's half German, half Brazilian, isn't she? Queen Sylvie of Sweden. Yeah, she must be getting on in years as well. Um, but I did, uh, I do like the Swedish royal family. And in fact, the ABBA song Dancing Queen was written for the Swedish royal family when they were coming to the throne back in the 70s. Here's a piece of useless trivia. Anyway, um, thank you also to the person that sent me a bottle of Prosecco, uh, even though I don't drink. Someone sent me a bottle of Kylie Minogue's Prosecco. I didn't even know that she made wine. I just knew her as a singer, of course. Uh, but somebody actually sent me a bottle, <laughs> so you know who you are. Thank you for that. I'll make sure that gets a good home. Unfortunately, I can't drink it myself, but uh, there are people around me who will enjoy that. So thank you very much. Um, and that's it from me for today. So Happy New Year to all of you. I hope it's good. Stay with me on our journey of motivation together. And uh, I really hope that you've enjoyed the podcasts between Christmas and New Year, particularly around speaking better. See you all. Take care. Bye.